Maximizing your tax refund with six proven strategies. Do you know that the average American leaves about $1,500 on the table each year in unclaimed tax refunds? That's a lot of money. What if we told you that there's a way to find some of this extra cash right in your tax return? Yep, that's possible. In today's video, we're talking about the mystery of tax refunds and show you how to squeeze every last cent out of them. So without wasting any time, let's start things off with first strategy understanding tax deductions and credits. These two terms might sound a bit intimidating, but trust us, they're not as scary as they seem. In fact, they're your best friends when it comes to maximizing your tax refund. Let's say you've gone on a shopping spree and racked up a bill of $1,000. But wait, you have a 10% discount, so you only have to pay $900. That's what a tax deduction does it reduces the amount of your income that's subject to tax, lowering your overall tax bill. On the other hand, a tax credit is more like a gift card. If you have a $100 gift card, you can use it to directly pay off part of your shopping spree. Similarly, a tax credit reduces your tax bill directly, dollar for dollar. Meet Jane, a freelance graphic designer. Jane works from her home office and spends a significant amount of her work equipment and software subscriptions. She learns that these are considered business expenses and can be deducted from her taxable income. By meticulously keeping track of these expenses, Jane manages to reduce her taxable income significantly, leading to a larger tax refund. In the same year, Jane also decides to go back to school part-time to upgrade her skills. She pays tuition fees and realizes that she can claim the lifetime learning credit, which directly reduces her tax bill. So you see, by understanding and applying both tax deductions and credits, Jane successfully maximizes her tax refund. Moving on, let's talk about your future, your retirement, to be precise. Yes, it might seem like a long way off, especially if you're in your 20s or 30s, but that's the thing. The earlier you start saving for retirement, the more comfortable your golden years will be. And guess what? The second strategy, investing in retirement accounts, can help you maximize your tax refund. When you contribute to certain types of retirement accounts, like traditional IRA or a 401k, these contributions are often tax deductible. That means they reduce your taxable income for the year. So if you made $50,000 this year and put $5,000 into your 401k, you'd only be taxed on $45,000. Pretty neat, right? Interestingly, the money in your retirement account also grows tax-free until you withdraw it. That means all the interest dividends and capital gains your investments earn won't be taxed as long as they stay in the account. Let's say you're a 30-year-old named Alex. Alex earns $60,000 a year and decides to contribute $6,000 to her traditional IRA. Not only does Alex lower her taxable income to $54,000, but she also sets herself up for a more comfortable retirement. This strategy of investing a retirement account has allowed Alex not to only save for her retirement, but also maximize her tax refund during her working years. Next up for the third strategy, we have charitable donations. But I give to charity because it feels good not because of tax benefits. And that's great, but wouldn't it be even better if your good deeds could help you maximize your tax refund? When you make a donation to a qualified charitable organization, that donation can often be deducted from your taxable income. That means if you earned $50,000 this year and donated $1,000 to charity, you'd only be taxed on $49,000. Pretty cool, right? Generally, only donations to registered nonprofit organizations count. So if you gave your neighbor $20 to help with their garage sale, that's a nice gesture. But it won't get you on a tax deduction. Also, you need to keep a record of your donations. Could be a bank statement, a credit card statement, or a receipt from the charity. If you're donating items instead of cash, the deductions is usually equal to the fair market value of the items. So. If you donated a used laptop worth $300, 
that's a $300 deduction. Like all previous strategies, let's take an example for this one as well. You know, for better understanding. We have Emily, a successful entrepreneur. Emily is passionate about supporting local art and regularly donates to her city's art museum. She keeps a record of all her donations throughout the year. When tax season comes around, Emily itemizes her deductions and includes her charitable donations. This significantly reduces her taxable income, leading to a larger tax refund. Moving on, if you're a student or even supporting a child through school, then this fourth strategy is for you. Education Expenses The IRS offers several tax credits related to education expenses. These credits can help offset the cost of higher education by reducing the amount of income tax you owe. If the credit reduces your tax to less than zero, you may even get a refund. There are actually two main education credits available. The American Opportunity Tax Credit, AOTC, and the Lifetime Learning Credit, LLC. The AOTC is worth up to $2,500 per year for an eligible student's first four years of higher education. And 40% of the credit, up to $1,000, is refundable. On the other hand, the LLC is worth up to $2,000 per tax returns, but it's non-refundable. Consider the case of Mark, a full-time MBA student. Mark pays a significant amount in tuition fees, course materials, and other education-related expenses. He learns about the American Opportunity Tax Credit. Although Mark is a graduate student, he finds out that he can still claim the Lifetime Learning Credit. In the same year, Mark also takes up a part-time job teaching at a local community college. Despite earning an income, Mark's education credits help offset his tax liability, eventually leading to a larger tax refund. Next up, we all know that healthcare can be expensive, especially if you're American. But did you know that certain healthcare expenses can actually help you maximize your tax refund? Yep, the IRS actually allows you to deduct certain medical and dental expenses from your taxable income. As long as these expenses exceed a certain percentage of your adjusted gross income, AGI. This includes things like doctor's fees, prescription medications, and even travel costs for medical care. What's the catch? Well, you need to itemize your deductions to claim these healthcare expenses. That means you'll need to keep a detailed record of all your medical and dental expenses throughout the year. So if you're someone who just tosses your receipts in a shoebox, or worse, the trash, you might want to rethink that strategy. While we're at it, let's talk about health savings accounts. An HSA is a type of savings account that lets you set aside money on a pre-tax basis to pay for qualified medical expenses. By contributing to an HSA, you can lower your taxable income and potentially boost your tax refund. Let's take an example of John. John has a high deductible health plan, so he decides to contribute $3,000 to his HSA this year. This reduces his taxable income by $3,000, which could lead to a bigger tax refund. Plus, John can use this money tax-free for qualified medical expenses. Moving on for the sixth strategy, we have your home. You know, owning a home is a big part of the American dream, but it can also come up with a hefty price tag. But being a homeowner can actually help you maximize your tax refund. The IRS allows homeowners to deduct certain expenses related to owning a home. If you have a mortgage on your home, the interest you pay on that loan is usually tax deductible. This can be a significant deduction, especially in the early years of your mortgage when most of your payments are going towards interest. You can also deduct the property taxes you pay on your home. This can add up to a substantial deduction, especially if you live in an area with high property tax rates. Certain home improvements can also be tax deductible especially if they're for medical care or energy efficiency. Take the story of Noah, a first-time homeowner. Noah takes out a mortgage to buy his home and pays a significant amount in mortgage interest. He learns that he can deduct this mortgage interest from his taxable income. Noah also pays property taxes, which he learns are also deductible. In the same year, Noah decides to make some energy efficient improvements to his home. He installs solar panels and finds out that he can claim the residential energy efficient property credit 
which directly reduces his tax bill. So, make sure you're taking full advantage of these like Noah. Well, that's it for today. So what's your tip for maximizing your tax refund? Have you tried any of the strategies we discussed today? Do you have any tips or tricks of your own that you'd like to share? Drop your comments below. Before you go, don't forget to check out our recent video on Your Money, Your Way, creating a financial plan to your lifestyle. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and press the bell icon. Thanks for watching.